Now that we have introduced functions, we have ways of segregating blocks of code into individual portions to be called later and executed. However, it would be great if we could also specify a condition in which the code should not execute. So say, for example, our value for x has to be greater than 1 in order for this to execute. We can do this with what's called an if statement. So we can say if x is greater than 1, curly brackets, manipulate x. So when this program executes, it will first call int main. It will <laughs> say hello. It will then declare x as a float. And then it will check if x is greater than 1. If it is, it will execute this function. But since it isn't, none of this will execute. And it will simply print 1. So if we compile and run, we'll see that we get hello and 1. Now let's delete the say hello for simplicity. And let's take it out of here. Now what if we want it to run manipulate x if x is greater than 1, but we wanted to do something else if x is less than or equal to 1. Well, after our if statement, we can say else. And then we can say x equals x minus 1, for example. So this program will execute. It will set x to a float of 1. It will then check if x is greater than 1. And since it is not, it will jump down to the else statement and subtract 1 from that value. So when we execute this, we should get 0. We can also combine our if statements and our functions in an interesting way. Rather than specifying what we want here, we can create a function. Now this function will need the return type of boolean because it will have a true or false result. And we'll say x greater than 1. And we will pass this, not int, but float x. And this function will have a simple return statement. That is, return x is greater than 1. So if we return down to our main function, rather than saying if x is greater than 1, we can say x greater than 1 and pass it x. And this will have the same result. Now this is obviously not a practical example. You would not write a function to check if a value is greater than one, especially because this function has one line of code. This is obviously superfluous. However, it's just illustrating that you can use the result of a function call in your if statement. So let's clear this once more and return to the practical x is greater than one. And let's talk about what happens if you have multiple paths that you would want this to take depending on this condition. So let's say if x is greater than 1, you want to manipulate x. If x is less than 1, you want to subtract 1 from it. But otherwise, you don't want to do anything to it. So instead of having one condition to check, we want to check multiple. And we do that with the else if. And here we can specify x is less than 1. And then finally, we add our final else statement. And we'll just set x equal to x. Now, again, that's not a practical thing to do. It's just for the purpose of demonstrating. If we save this, clear, compile, and execute, x remains 1. And the reason for this is we run int main. We set x equal to 1. We check if x is greater than 1, and 1 is not greater than 1. So we skip this block. We then check if x is less than 1. 1 is not less than 1, so we skip this block, which leaves us with our final possibility of anything else. So we execute this block and print 1. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel, and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.